So whenever I meet new people, uh, conversations typically start with a little bit of small talk. And it always comes down to one question. Uh, and it's an, maybe it's an American thing. I don't know if this happens in Europe or other countries, but uh, what it comes down to is, uh, so what do you do for a living? What do you do for work? We've all heard that before, right? And I have, um, I've had kind of a hard time answering that question, uh, having a non-traditional job, being a, a full-time YouTube creator. It's not as awkward as it was years ago. Uh, there's a, people seem to, a lot more people seem to be aware of, of this, that this is something, or this is actually, uh, can be a job. Um, um, and then the question comes around, well, well what do you do and, and, and uh, how, you know, how does it work? You know, a lot of folks are usually interested in this because they've never met anyone that's done this before. And um, they ask me, you know, what I like about it. And I said, you know what, I think what I like the most about it is that um, in the morning, uh, I wake up and I, I decide, I ask myself this question. I've always done this. I've said this, I've told this to a thousand, thousands of people. Uh, what, what do you, I ask myself, what do you want to do today? And I think, well, do we want to ride dirt bikes today? Do we want to um, uh, paint the house? Or do we want to work in the shop? Or do we want to do blacksmithing? Or do we want to cut firewood or, 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 or whatever? And that's the way I've always ran my channel. Uh, I know some folks write videos and they do scripts and they put things kind of plan ahead of time. And I, I've never really done that before. I, I've, I've really, um, I, I make up my mind on what I'm going to video uh, while I'm in the shower. It seems like it's the only place that I actually have um, um, a, a, a separation from all of the distractions. Um, and I can, I can think in there. It's, it's sad that that's the only, <laughs> only place that, uh, that you can get to ha have to think. And, um, and that sounds great, you know, I mean, that, and I, I convinced myself for years, I'm like, well, how lucky are you? You get to do whatever you want to do. And after years and years of, of working in construction and being told what to do and, and working with um, um, some very undesirable people in horrible circumstances, I mean, I just remember in the middle of winter in rain gear, you know, six feet in the, under the ground in a trench laying sewer pipes. I hated that work. I just hated it. And so to be able to, to say to myself, well, uh, what do you want to do today, uh, for me, is, a, is quite an accomplishment. But uh, that's not working out very good for me. Uh, because what I'm finding is that um, as I look around and as I look at the shops or the house, I see a mountain of unfinished projects. And every time I look at them, it hits me. It's like, oh, I need to do that. Oh, I need to do that. Oh, I need to tighten that bolt. Oh, I need to finish that. Oh. And it starts to make your life miserable and it starts to steal all of your joy because you can never relax. Everywhere I look is an unfinished project. Everywhere I, I go, there is something that just, you know, was maybe 90% done uh, but didn't get completed. And I was thinking about the, that this morning and I was talking to Mrs. W and I said, you know what, when I look around this place now, yeah, we have accomplished a lot, but all I see is a mountain of failure. And she looked at me and said, honey, it's not a mountain of failure, it's a mountain of opportunity. And that's when the bell, or that's when the bell struck in my head and I knew exactly what I needed to do. The next, uh, we'll take the next seven days, I am going to be doing uh, just the opposite of what I've done for years and years. I'm going to look around and I'm not going to ask myself, what do you want to do today? I'm going to ask myself, what is it you don't want to do today? I mean, standing right here in the front of the, in front of the camera, I can look around and I can tell you a lot of things I don't want to do today. I don't want to finish the trim and paint that exterior door that I hung. I don't want to install the new stairs uh, that are breaking. I don't want to, uh, to peel off or to scrape off all of that peeling paint. I don't want to rotate the tires on my van. I don't want to organize all of my ammunition and clean the guns that I never got around to cleaning after Thunder Ranch and on and on and on. And another thing I don't want to do is I don't want to eat well, I don't want to drink enough water, I don't want to have worship with my family, and I don't want to get up in the morning and exercise. These are all things that I don't want to do. And for years and years I have done exactly what I wanted to do and that is to do things that are fun, uh, to quit. Uh, uh, to quit on projects when they be, no longer became interesting, when the real grinding and the hard work came into, into play, and moving on to something else. I, I, it's, it, it, it's not working out for me. And it's, it's, so here's what I'm gonna do. 
for the next seven days, I'll, we'll take the Sabbath off. We don't work on the Sabbath. Next seven days, I'm going to set my alarm clock. I haven't set an alarm clock in years. 5 a.m. 5 a.m. And here's what I'm going to do. I am either going to run three miles or bike 10, depending, you know, I, I, I hate running. Uh, I know I'm going to be sore because I'm not used to running. Uh, so if I can't feel, feel like running, I'm going to I'll get on the bike and I'll ride. I'm going to do that every morning. I'm going to do 100 push-ups. Not all at once. I'd be lucky if I could do 20 right now. But if it takes me till midnight doing one at a time and resting in between, I'm going to do, I'm going to do 100 push-ups every day. I'm going to drink a gallon of water. And I'm going to look around here. I'm going to take a walk outside or in the house. This, who knows where it could take us. It could be... Uh, in the cold room, it could be in the wood shop, it would all these unfinished things, we're gonna do them together. And I'm gonna ask myself, what is it that you really, really don't want to do today? What comes to mind is I've got about 20 cords of wood that stacks out there, needs to be stacked out there. I don't want to do that, trust me, but I'm going to do it. So I invite you to join tomorrow. We start and it's going to be who knows what it's gonna be. It's gonna be all the things that I have been putting off all of the unfinished projects and at the end of that seven days let's take a look and see how much did we accomplish how much could how how much could have been done i last i'll close with this last um it was sunday you know and my wife my wife bless her she's so patient you know she never nags and, and never gets on me but she you know she'll say things like you know maybe i could help you with that siding you know we got Tyvek or whatever house wrap on the paper for how long has it been up there? Over a year? 18 months? You know, and people coming over and driving by. It doesn't reflect well on, on my family. It doesn't, doesn't reflect well on me. It doesn't re it, when people drive by and yeah, it's one thing to, we're doing some, you know, we're replacing a window and we took the siding off and have it up in a week, but a year or two, it's shameful. Uh, it, it's just shameful. And, it, and it, I, I, I guess I started down this journey on Sunday and, and I said to myself, I, nothing's happening until that siding's done. And I got it done. And it was this huge project that I'd built up in my mind for so long, like, oh, I don't have this, and I don't have time to do that. And you know what? When it came down to it, it took Jack and I two and a half hours to put that siding on. And why didn't I do it? Why didn't I do it a year ago? Why didn't I do it right after I'd taken it off? You know, and, and it's, you know, and that, that right there was, you know really open my eyes and I haven't been able to think about anything else and and so I want to invite you to do that uh, just some of the things that, that come that that uh, that I'm gonna take care of is um, I haven't folded my laundry and my my clothing and like in my dresser drawers it's just a mess and every morning you know there's aggravation because I don't uh, have a matching sock or I want to wear this black t-shirt but I have no idea where it's in and digging through the stuff and throwing it on the floor you know it just starts the day off wrong and I've read some stories of some highly successful people that wear the same thing every day and I thought that's crazy but the more I think about it that's not crazy why, if you're an important person, if you're running a, a multi-million dollar corporation, you've got a lot of things on your mind. And the last thing you need, need the first thing in the morning is a bunch of stress about where's this, where's that, where are my keys, where are my pocket knife, where's my phone, I can't find this. Do you need that? No, all, the, all it does is you start your day off on the wrong foot. Usually you get aggravated with your family members and it's just, it's amazing how you're, how how slack and lazy and how you lose our how we lose our edges when we get comfortable when 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 we're no longer hungry whether it be for money or or whatever and things start getting comfortable you start to just get lazy and you start finding ways to to make your life easy but that easy life isn't where happiness is remember remember growing up my mom i used to i'll, I'll really close with this my mom used to have me fold laundry when I was a little kid, uh, we'd fold everything, you know, fold the uh, washcloths and put the socks and the t-shirts and put them all in the drawer neatly. And I thought, you know what, that's, that was a quaint, silly, silly uh, tradition that, you know, that came from back in the old days, you know, and, and that has no meaning today. You know, we're, we're liberated people. We don't, need to, we don't need to be bound by the rules of our parents. But now... I'm starting to see that there was wisdom in that because there was order in that. And that order, if you can make your bed, if you can pick up things, if you can leave the house, as I said, and know where everything's at, that order translates into so many other things and I just now, it's just dawning on me. So I'm gonna do that. 
and and I'm going to or, I'm going to run a, an orderly home, and I'm going to take care of my things better, and I'm going to make a much better attempt when I start something to finish it, and not to have all these things you know, not to keep going on. What it's like is is just skipping the meal and going great to dessert. Yeah, I don't want to eat my peas. I don't eat my carrots. I don't eat hateful broccoli. Uh, I want to eat that. I want to eat that tiramisu, right? <laughs> So what happens if you eat your tiramisu every day and you don't eat anything else? You know, it's not going to work. It's not going to work out very well for you. You might really enjoy it for a, a week or two, but uh, and that's what's happening. That's what's happened to me here. So tomorrow we begin the 5 a.m. wake up call. Going to do the run. Going to do the push ups. Going to do the. Going to do all the things that I don't want to do, and I'm going to share it with you. And then we're going to see how much we can get done. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your support in the comments. Join me uh, if you feel like you're in the same boat, um, and we'll uh, we'll be better men for our wives and for our families. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.